All right. Well, welcome to uh, uh, day 45, halfway point of the legislative session. Uh, my name is Representative Pruitt. I am joined here with uh, by Representative Tilton, Representative uh, uh, Thompson, Representative Wilson. Uh, this is the uh, finance crew for the Republicans up in, in the House Finance Committee. And uh, we are looking forward to having a conversation with you a little bit about kind of the things we've been working on and the uh, kind of the, the, the things that we'll uh, continue to be working on, especially as it relates to the finance uh, side of things. Uh, we have been going through uh, the the, the new version of, of kind of creating a CS in, in the Finance Committee over the last few days. And uh, I have completed that process. CS was, was rolled out yesterday. And I uh, look forward to taking public testimony over the, the course of the next couple days. And I, I, I know some of, some of us will actually be, uh, I'll, I'm going to head back in to, to Anchorage on Friday night. And I'll be there on Saturday uh, sitting across the table along with Rep. Grin, uh, listening to people back home and then, so that I can also attend the Anchorage caucus. But uh, looking forward to kind of hearing what they have to say. Uh, this is a, a kind of a different year. We're not doing the, we haven't seen in the budget itself actually some of the cuts that we've seen in the last couple of years. As a matter of fact, we've seen increases. So it will be very interesting to hear what um, they have to say. What I'd like to do is uh, I'd like to uh, ask uh, Rep. Tilton to talk a little bit about some of the things that she's working on and then we'll uh, hear from uh, the other members as well. Rep. Tilton. Yeah. Good morning. Um, we are working in the budget. We have the work draft out, and as a member of the finance team here, I um, am tasked with the subcommittee on the health and social services budget, and that's the budget in the area where we're seeing a lot of the increases. One of the big things that uh, we've noticed in the budget is the request for 41 new positions in um, public assistance for eligibility technicians. There are... Um, that's growing government. They, we actually have positions that are already available that could be used to fill fill there. And um, as we're, we're looking into that situation, they, uh, as far as advertising or even looking to fill that, they haven't done a lot to do that. So, um, and there's no plan on how they're going to attack this backlog that they talk about. And so I think that throwing more positions and more money at that is, is throwing, throwing dollars at a problem without a plan of attack of how, how we're going to get rid of that problem. So before we do that, we, we need to, we need to come up with some kind of a plan and and not increase government just for um, you know the value of throwing throwing money at it and increasing government. Um, Medicaid is a big issue, especially with the supplemental. There was a very large supplemental that had to do with Medicaid that I think everybody out here is aware of. Um, the one thing that you know the department has said about that is that they told us there was going to they were going to need an increase uh, determining whether it's Medicaid or Medicaid expansion is something that we're digging into. The good thing is is there's wordage in the budget uh, that's coming out now that would um, close that open-ended Medicaid spending and uh, put a stop to no more supplemental spending. Um, you're also going to see what you, will look like a decrease in the DHSS budget by uh, $18 million. That Don't be fooled by that. That's not a decrease. The governor had put the senior benefits program into the budget uh, before the bill was passed, and so that was removed until the bill actually goes through the through the system and um, comes out with a fiscal note. So there's really not a reduction of $18 million. Just just don't be uh, don't be fooled by that. The overall budget increase is about $595 million. And uh, I guess I just go back to something I've talked about before is um, the need for a constitutional spending limit. If we had that uh, apply to constitutional spending limit uh, to agency operations alone, uh, just in the UGF section, our maximum spend right now would be $3.8 billion. So, um, you know, we, we need to stop growing the budget. We don't have the dollars. We're in a deficit position. So I look at a constitutional spending limit as a contract with Alaskans for fiscal restraint. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Representative Thompson. Thank you. Well, you've heard it said, this is day 45. We're halfway to where we would like to be able to get out of here. And it's going to take a lot of work. And this budget process is uh, really starting to get to us a little bit. You know, we've all owned businesses. We know what we can spend out of our own business. And we don't just go out there and make up a bunch of expected, this is what we're going to spend next year, not knowing that we are going to have the revenue. And that's what we're doing in the government. We're, we're upside down. Uh, I don't think it's the way that we should be doing things. We, uh, we put the cart before the horse, horse completely. 
So my feeling is that we've got a lot of work to do. Uh, I don't like where we're at or where we're headed with this budget, but uh, we got to try to get done in 90 days. So we just keep saying prayers. <laughs> Rep. Wilson. Thank you, um, Representative Pruitt. I, I find it interesting. I spent my morning doing my private business and writing checks out because it's the end of the month um, yesterday. So when we um, looked at the earnings um, withdrawal that the the majority wants to do, why would you do that at the very last minute? That should have been the first week discussion that we had because you have to know how much revenue you have before you start spending. And instead, we look at, you know, how much we're going to spend, and then we're trying to find revenue somewhere. Um, so that's just, that's, that's just totally backwards. You're not going to probably see as many amendments this year because last year's amendments are still valid. What we were just trying to really do last year was try to hold to the 2016 actuals. If we had done that, we would have gotten pretty close to $200 million that we wouldn't have had this year. We're using some of the same uh, attack measures this year as, okay, we well, couldn't hold the 2016 actuals. How about 2017? The other concerning part that we heard about was the oil tax credits. We have a formula, and we've had it for many, many years. All of a sudden, miraculously, now we're going to change the calculation because they've looked at the statute, and now they think it should have been done a different way. Well, when we had all those discussions with the companies, you know, most of us sat there and said, we're sorry you're going to have to wait, but that's what the statute says, is you have to wait until the formula is able to pay it off. And now when there would have been approximately $206 million to pay off some of that backlog, now we're, we're down to $40 million because the Department of Revenue has changed their mind on how they're doing it. I also find it interesting that we're having all these appropriation bills. We have a fast-track supplemental um, that doesn't even take effect um, until April. Well, April 16th is 90 days. If we're going to get done in 90 days, why are we having more appropriation bills? Let's get our jobs done. Let's get the amendments done. Let's bring one appropriation bill to the floor, and let's get done and let's get it passed. We don't have to wait until day 90 to get the budget done which unfortunately done. And, I, and one last thing I just want to, again, we're using the fund changes again. We're using the higher education money. We're using this, this year new for the governor was he paid some of our, the constitutional budget reserve. We're going to use the constitutional budget reserve, but what normally happens is we paid out the general fund first. And then whatever the general fund doesn't have in it, then the constitutional budget reserve comes back and backfills and in, and then possibly the earnings reserve, depending upon the size of the budget. But to delegate part of that there makes it look like our unrestricted general funds went down. They didn't. And now we have a bill that's even larger than that because we added about another over $20 million to the budget in the last couple of days. So, you know, I don't know how you could say one side, you know, we need a plan, we need to decrease on what we're spending when in reality we're increasing it. Yeah, I think you Representative Wilson. And while there's, I'm sure, lots more that we could uh, wax on or, or talk about, uh, we'll go ahead and open it up to questions uh, from uh, you guys, the, the press. And um, I don't know who we're going to go first. Uh, as, as you state your name, who you're with, and ask your question. Uh, Thanks, Steve you. Quinn, KTVA News. On the um, uh, Fast Track Supplemental, um, are there any concerns about uh, any of the items on there? And also, with uh, your concerns that you've just outlined on the operating budget itself, uh, do, you still, do you see yourself um, using the fast track supplemental uh, for any negotiations on the operating budget since you've got a vote coming up possibly Monday? So on the fast track supplemental, uh, some of the biggest concerns is $20 million to corrections, $10 million that goes to population management and $10 million going to health. And then they have that same um, $20 million increase in 2019. Um, it's really concerning because that's one of the fastest growing budgets. It's almost growing faster percentage-wise than health and social services is. And my concern is we have a commissioner who is looking to bring everybody back into the prison system. Instead, what we try to do in different bills is more treatment so that you have a step-down approach. So once, because people are going to get out. There will be a few that may not, but the majority of people will get out. And right now, two of three are going to offend again. They're going to violate someone else you know, two out of three times. And so just throwing more money at it is not going to do it, and policy is being made. As far as utilizing the supplemental, we're going to have some amendments to reduce it, but as far as putting other things in that are in, we'll, we'll make sure that happens in the normal process. I think that just muddies the water and doesn't allow the right kind of conversation to happen if we're trying to do it on the floor versus committee where we can make sure the public knows what that money is going to. 
and, and I would add that one of the um, one of the other areas that kind of stood out to me was the uh, the fund source change for community revenue sharing. Uh, I think the intent in, in legislation that was passed just a couple years ago was that the um, PCE fund would, would play a role in that. And that's initially how it came out uh, and shown in, in the uh, supplemental as presented. And this year, taking the money that was returned through the, uh, the ACHIA um, uh, kind of refund, I guess, for better, lack of a better term, and moving that out of health and moving that into a different area, I don't know that that necessarily sits with the intent of where we initially appropriated that money, the intent of where, because that fund is going to be, uh, it, one, it's larger than just the $30 million, as well as it's going to have other monies put in there. And so is the goal that we maintain that the, that because healthcare is going to continue to be a challenge, do we utilize that in healthcare manners, or do we move it around? So that was uh, another item in there that was uh, of concern in terms of utilizing it uh, in in a, the negotiations on the operating budget. You know, I think the the goal is we're going to present items that we feel uh, comfortable with saying th there, here's the backup for it. And, you know, it's, it's going to be up to the other side to determine whether or not they're just going to turn everything down like they did last year or whether or not they're going to listen to some of the valid points we brought up. I would like to highlight that some of the things that we offered last year, you saw in the subcommittee that the majority then turned and latched onto and utilized. Right? So, you know, some of these things, not only do they stand, actually all of the things, I mean, that we're offering stand on their own. And so if they choose not to, to uh, even take a look at that, well then, you know, that's something that they're going to have to answer to the Alaskan people for. Because these are good, solid ideas. Uh, some of the things that we're working on this year aren't reinventing necessarily even the wheel from last year. And these are things that they even admitted on their own are good ideas. And, um, and we'll continue to make that case that we're just bringing up uh, good points that we think will better the budgetary process. Did you see a, um, uh, Monday, a philosophical debate on the, Did you see a philosophical debate on the, on the uh, supplemental, or is it a line item debate that you're going to see, or do you see this as just something like, we need this and we'll move on to the operating budget? Well, I, you know, I think it's a waste right. of time. I mean, it, it, you got to look at the dates. The dates are 90 days from now. The budget's supposed to be done. So why are we spending more time on another um, appropriation bill? If we just took it like we normally do, all in one bill, including the operating, we could have put the supplemental in when we get ready to pass it over to the Senate side in, in what I anticipate to be within the next two weeks. You know, so we, we have this appropriation bill, then we have the school appropriation bill. You know, all these things, if we're going to be done in 90 days, we need to have one appropriation bill so we have one conference committee and we can get out of here in 90 days. I think you're putting so many little pieces and splintering it that it will actually take more time, not less. Um, let's see if there's any other questions. James. Uh, regarding the discussion on the tax credits, we heard a pretty stern warning from the Commissioner of Revenue in Senate Finance, or excuse me, uh, Senate Resources, about uh, not revising the statutory calculation. You had mentioned that it was coming from the Governor's Office, a, a revi or a, coming from revenue, a revised calculation? Um, I, I think, the, actually, I, I, what I, as I understood it, is the revised calculation uh, initially, it was highlighted by revenue back in the uh, one, a member of uh, revenue back in the um, uh, special session, but in the current session, that revised formula has been articulated by the majority.